of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead us. O Lord, open thou my lips, that my mouth may show forth thy praise. O Lord, graciously preserve me, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be rejected. Amen. You can be seated. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a classic episode of Andy Griffith. Andy and Barney are trying to figure out who to sucker into going with them and their dates to the Chamber of Commerce dance. You see, Barney's girlfriend, Thelma Lou, she wasn't going unless her cousin, Mary Grace, had a date. And that was up to Andy and Barney to try to figure out who could go with Mary Grace. But you see, Mary Grace was not the prettiest girl at the dance. In fact, Mary Grace wasn't pretty at all. So who could they get to go to the dance with her? In walks Gomer. Andy says, Gomer, have you given much thought to the Chamber of Commerce dance Saturday night? No, I can't say that I have, Gomer says. Barney says, well, how would you like to come along with us in the company of a lady? Andy chimes in, we've got one for you. They explain, she's nice, she's sweet, she's smart as a whip. To which Gomer asks, is she pretty? Nice, they reply. Very nice. You know, coming out of the world of American evangelicalism, this is what I've often observed about us Lutherans. And don't kid yourself. We are the ugly girl at the dance. Just accept it. We are Mary Grace. I mean, we just sang it this morning where though with a scornful wonder the world sees her, namely the church, oppressed by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed. Boy, we got the character, meaning the doctrine. But when it comes to looks, to that which the world sees, that which the world values. We're like Mary Grace. We aren't the prettiest thing in town. We are not hip. We are not cool. And this seems to be why most folks just walk on by without even acknowledging that we're here. But that's okay. That is okay. For we know that God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are what? Which are mighty. So speaking of our character, speaking of our doctrine, speaking really of our identity as Lutherans, 494 years ago, the protesting estates, that which came to be known as the Protestants, led by John the Elector of Saxony, presented to Emperor Charles V their confession of the faith. The year 1530, the place, Augsburg, Germany. The mission, it was to present a clear understanding of what they believed and what they didn't believe. Philip Melanchthon, he helped revise the articles which were drafted earlier that year. That confessional document was entitled the Thorgal Articles. Thus, after Melanchthon's revision, what the Lutheran reformers believed consisted of 21 articles which were in agreement with the medieval Catholic Church. However, seven articles is where they corrected the abuses of Rome. They protested. By the way, this church is named after this document of articles. Why? Because the Augsburg Confession is a true exhibition of 
the Christian faith. It's because what we believe, teach, and confess is what the church, capital C, has always believed, what it's always taught, and what it's always confessed. Moreover, what the Augsburg Confession teaches is what the Holy Scriptures teach. History teaches us that on the anniversary of the presenting of this confession, it was the customary practice in the churches of the Reformation to read the entire Augsburg Confession from the pulpit in lieu of a sermon. This is still actually done in some places to a point. So, in keeping with our forefathers, I decided to follow suit. For what can I possibly say to you better than what our forefathers did? So it's either me read portions of it, or we sing Lord Ever Keep Us Secure, compiled by C. Becker, which are the 21 articles of the Augsburg Confession summarized in song form written in 1631. I think we just sang a pretty big hymn myself, so let's jump right into listening once again to what it is that we believe. Number one, there is one God who is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Number two, all people are by nature sinful and in need of a new birth through baptism. Three, Christ is truly divine and truly human. In both natures, Christ was sacrificed in order to atone for our sins and reconcile us all to the Father. Four, no one can become righteous in God's sight by his own efforts, but solely through faith that is in Christ and his salvific work upon the cross. Five, God gives us faith through the gospel and the sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Six, true faith brings forth the good deeds God expects of his children. Seven, the church is the assembly of believers in which the gospel is rightly taught and the sacraments rightly administered. Eight, gospel and sacraments in the church are effectual even though received through unworthy ministers. Nine, the grace of God is offered in baptism and therefore baptism is necessary. 10. The body and blood of Christ are distributed and received under the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper. 11. Private confession and absolution of sins are approved, though a man's sins are greater than he can confess entirely. 12. Sinners may be absolved of sin upon honest repentance. Thirteen, the sacraments are signs of God's will towards us to stir up and confirm faith in those who receive them. Fourteen, no one should teach publicly in the church or administer the sacraments unless he has been properly called. Fifteen, Celebration of holy days and feasts is approved, but not held necessary. 16. Christians should support their government and obey its laws, unless these are contrary to God's own laws. 17. Christ will return at the last day as the judge. 18. Man has freedom of will to work for earthly righteousness, but cannot attain God's righteousness without God's help. 19. Sin is not caused by God, but by man's failure to obey God. 20. 
A man who has faith may be expected to live rightly, although it is not his good works which earn him God's approval. 21. The saints may be kept in hallowed memory, but they are not to be worshipped. 22. Both Christ's body and blood are to be given to communicants in the Lord's Supper. 23. Priests are allowed to marry. 24. Holy Communion is to be celebrated reverently, not as a new sacrifice for sin, but for strengthening of faith. 25. Confession of sin is a proper means of preparation for receiving communion. 26. Observance of holy days, fasts, rites, and attire are not essential to Christianity and must not be compulsory. 27. God is not pleased by men and women who flee into monasteries and convents as though to become righteous by their own works. 28. The church is not to rule the state or make laws governing men's consciences in religious practices unless these laws already exist in God's Word. The first time I read these articles, I looked up with tears in my eyes asking, where has this been my whole life? For in all of my theological studies, in all of my classes, in all of my books that I read and lectures that I heard, not to mention all of the conversations I had with professors, seminary professors, not to mention all of the conversations I had with fellow colleagues, i.e. pastors, these articles were never referred to in my American evangelical world. No one directed my eyes to them. And as a result of that, I spent far too many years wandering around in the darkness. Whew. Lord have mercy. But when I read them, it's like the scales fell off and light flooded in, the fog dissipated, and I said to myself, I am Lutheran. Beloved, I am proud to say that I will willingly, gladly, joyfully, I will go to the dance I will go any day, I will go every day, I will go all day with Mary Grace. Because pretty or not, that is who I need to be with. That's who I want to be with. That's who I would willingly give my life for, just as the men who presented these articles. Praise be to God. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. I will extol thee, O Lord, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Amen. We stand together. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the offertory.